Hello, hi, I'm Alicia and I'm from Simply Health. Today we are with Dr. Evrol at his clinic. Hello, sir. How hi, are you? Hi, fine, thank you. Uh, so, we are going to talk about the topic hearing test today. So, sir, so I wanted to ask you what are the types of hearing tests for adults? Uh, for adults, uh, we have very standard uh, tests which are done for hearing, it is called pure tone audiometry and uh, this test involves the response from the patient and uh, the sounds are given to the patient and the patient has to tell us whether he is able to hear or not. In this test, we actually test the whole range of uh, the sound uh, in all hertz which we call the unit of sound is hertz. So in all range of uh, sound, we test the patient with each frequency and we have a very detailed graph after the test. So this is a standard test for adults who can respond well. And what about hearing tests for toddlers? For toddlers and infants, uh, since their response is not reliable, probably they, they don't know about it. So we have to do certain tests where their involvement is least. Okay. The children who are a little bigger, they who can respond, we do something called behavioral audiometry where we uh, give some sounds to the patient and see the behavior of the patient. Judging by the behavior, we can say that this is the sound that he is able to, the child is able to hear or he is not able to hear. This is called behavior audiometry. And this is a, not a very exact test, but then we have a broad uh, judgment and idea about the patient's hearing. Uh, the other test which can be done is where the patient's involvement is not required at all, which is done for infants or very small children. Uh, it is called BERA, B-E-R-A, Brainstem Evoked Response Audiometry, where um, uh, the certain like electrodes are put on the head of the patient, okay. uh, of the child, and child is put to sleep. Okay. And uh, through that electrodes, we you know convey sounds in the electrical imp form of electrical impulse, and we pick up the changes in the brain in response to the hearing. Okay. It is called B E R A BERA. So this is done for infants or informed people who cannot respond, who don't know what is uh, going on. So uh, there are two types of uh, tests which are, and then there is another one which is called screening in the children, okay. uh, very small infants like premature babies and all for which BARA is also one but BARA is a little detailed uh, test there is a bedside screening called autoacoustic emissions so these are the uh, wa brain waves which are uh, you know collected from the ear of a uh, premature baby or infant and the there is a small machine which can be carried to the ear and it picks up the brain the waves of the sound uh, from the inner ear so it's called autoacoustic emission so for children and infants, there are three tests three which tests. I have already done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and what is the importance of hearing tests right now? Uh, hearing test is very important because uh, all the people who have deafness for any cause, like uh, old people who have deafness, which is natural, it's called presbycusis, like glasses. People, uh, old, old people uh, have some kind of hearing loss. Really? They need uh, assessment and also the people who have some ear problem like uh, discharging ears or infection. All of them need hearing test. So uh, yeah. hearing test is... Uh, we can get to know yeah. And also in uh, certain professionals who are exposed to a lot of noises, who are uh, involved with the construction industry or maybe instrumentation, they are exposed to a lot of noises. Right. They need yearly checkups to see whether there is any harm, um, uh, you know, a cause cause to the ears. Yeah. Okay. And how frequently should these tests be done? See, if there is, if the patient has no problem, if the person has no problem at all, then he doesn't need to get them regularly. But uh, once in a while, maybe once in two or three years, he can get them done. But the people who are exposed to uh, noises, to loud sounds, industrial workers, they must, as a rule, get their hearing tested every year, once at least. And how to prepare for a hearing test? There are no specific preparations or no special preparation for hearing tests. At least in adults, it's just you can walk in into a chamber of hearing test chamber or to a ENT doctor 
and get this done this takes about 5 minutes the pure tone audiometry takes not more than 5 minutes but in children who uh, need uh, these tests for hearing they uh, need three four preparations uh, in a nutshell one is to they need conditioning okay. because in behavioral audiometry we condition the child that in response to sound the child has to do some action i agree so that because child may not understand how to raise the finger or raise the arm right, or hand or whatever but reaction yeah some reaction we first condition the child after one or two sittings that in response to this particular such certain sounds you have to do certain action so it's a conditioning uh, the other thing is that the for the brain evoked response audiometry or otocoustic mission there are certain preparations like uh, patient has to put uh, to sleep uh, also the patient should not have oiled hair or oiled head so that the electrodes can be stuck on them so these are yeah certain things which are preparation okay. and what are the machines of the gadgets used for a uh, uh for adult audiometry it's a standard ga- gadget called audiometer pure tone audiometer and uh, it 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 conveys the uh, sound of various frequencies at various loudness level to the patient's ear through a ear ear fo- earphone uh, through a headphone so it's a headphone uh, which uh, receives the uh sound from outside the machine audiometer is outside the chamber whereas the patient is in the sound proof chamber and the sound is uh, delivered through headphones into the patient's ear and patient responds by if he is listening he will respond by raising the figure so it's a standard pure tone audio audiometer which is uh, used for this but for okay. children it's a special equipments called bera Bera equipment is special. Otocoustic mission is another very special uh, equipment, and uh, normal pure tone audiometer doesn't uh, cannot be used for children. And like, what are the preventions of uh, some ear disease? Uh, actually, there are certain do's and don'ts. कुछ चीजें ऐसी हैं जो कि हम patients को बोलते हैं कि नहीं करिए. Like uh, जैसे चिल्ड्रन में आजकल प्रॉब्लम है दे आर लिसनिंग टू लाउड म्यूजिक इन द ईयरफोन्स ऑल द टाइम फॉर मेनी ओवर्स इन अ डे द पीपल हु आर इन म्यूजिक इंडस्ट्री हु आर इन स्टूडियोज और हु आर एक्सपोज टू साउंड ऑल द टाइम लाइक डी जे प्लेयर्स और द इंडस्ट्रियल पीपल ऑल दीज पीपल आर एडवाइज टू लिमिट द आवर्स ऑफ साउंड एक्सपोजर they must use muffles as long as as much as possible especially the industrial workers can use the muffles mm-hmm. which are maskers yeah which, yeah which are sound maskers for uh, to prevent uh, sound exposure okay. but in music industry probably it's not that uh, possible because they have to hear what they are uh, doing so right. so for for them it's important that they get the uh, regularly they get checkups uh, periodical checkups and uh, those checkups must be strictly done and uh, preventive measures to be taken if they if they see something wrong also excessive phone use the people who use a lot of phone all the time like uh, 4 5 6 7 8 hours every day for many many months years they are likely to, to get some uh, changes in their hearing over a period of time so they must also avoid continuous phone use anything you like to add in the end i must say that uh, ear diseases is not uncommon in the society and but the problem is it's a neglected area lot of people don't pay heed to the problems that they are having in the ears uh, there are lot of people who have uh, dirty wax they have a lot of dirty discharges they have problems they don't they self medicate and they self clean and do lot of things which uh, should be uh, done by a by a trained professional and uh, if there is any problem happening to the ears they should approach the doctor rather than self medicate